I'm going to do a little review of marriage, Married at First Sight, season 12, because it was just so obvious that the people who are organizing this show really don't know what they're doing and should be sued and should be fired for the way they did this particular season. I hadn't looked at Married at First Sight before, but I happened to watch it and I was shocked at how pitiful the whole show was. Of course, the first, first person we think of is Chris and Paige, young black couple who were matched as being perfect for one another. And Paige already had a certain amount of hesitancy because she wasn't sure if she was going to be wanted by the groom, whoever she was matched with. And so she went out and did well. The groom said uh, he was very picky about who he wanted. Uh, he said uh, if he didn't, if he wasn't attracted to the girl, he didn't think it was going to work out. Now, if you're that specific, that you're not going to be attracted to the girl if she didn't look a certain way, then you are not ready for marriage at first. Married at first sight, because married at first sight, you have these people who are supposed to be professionals in marriage for whatever the background is and they pick based on a questionnaires a person who fits you and then you're supposed to marry that person well it doesn't go into like if you're looking for a certain height or if, if you're looking for a certain skin color or if you're looking for a certain weight or other things that might specifically turn a person off so Chris had one of the first things he said was if he looks at the girl and she doesn't look appealing to him, he was sure he wasn't going to be happy with the marriage. So Paige comes out. She looks very nice in her dress. And you could kind of tell on his face that this wasn't a pick that he would, he would have had. Paige is, her face is darker brown. And so, you know, you didn't really see her chest and stuff, which are a lighter tone of brown. But her face is darker brown. She had in uh, hair extensions, long braids. And some guys don't like that. Some guys don't like hair extensions. Some guys don't, don't mind it. So that's very specific. You have to ask guys, you know, do they mind if you're the person they pick wears hair extensions? So that might have been a turn off or it might, he might not have cared about it. But in general, you could see that she didn't fit his type, whatever his type is. And they should have looked at what his type was in the past. They should have had pictures. What do your past girlfriends look like? Some people don't realize they have a type, but if you look at their past girlfriends, they all look similar. They may, may even look almost like sisters. So it's very common to find men who divorce a wife after 20 years and they remarry a girl who looked like the wife looked 20 years ago. So they have a type. They have a certain thing they look for that they're attracted to. And that would be very helpful information if you're trying to pick strangers to meet and marry. So Chris lied. He said he was a very honorable person, smooth, cool. He had all these great adjectives for himself. And then it turns out he's a complete liar. He uh, came on. He was having sex up to six weeks and maybe even closer to the marriage date. So this man wasn't even fully checked for sexually transmitted diseases when he got on this show. And I think most of the contestants felt that the people had been totally checked out, that they were sure they were getting a safe partner. And the other thing I felt really bad was not only are they strangers and they're being put into a marriage and then straight into a bedroom. I mean, this bedroom doesn't even have like a living room section you know it would be different if it was a suite where they had a bedroom and then they had a little section where they had a living room where they could sit and talk and decide you know does one person want to sleep on the couch and one person in the bed you didn't have a chance in this i mean you were put in a room with one bed and these two strangers and you had to make it work so they get into this room and they are encouraged by these people who are supposed to be professionals to engage in sexual intercourse. This is the most ridiculous thing ever. Why would you have 
sexual intercourse with a stranger, it's well known that women are much more bonded to somebody, and some men too, after they have sexual intercourse. So you don't want the sexual intercourse coming too soon before they had a chance to know each other and kind of at a distance be able to decide whether or not this is the type of person they like to be able to make judgments about the things they say, about their past history, and so forth. So these two are put in the room, they're encouraged to have sex. Chris is in there and he wants to have sex multiple times on the first night. Now this is sexual abuse to me because this woman feels obligated. This is almost, I don't know, this is something out of the dark ages, I don't see why somebody would want to have sex multiple times with some stranger as a marriage relationship. I, um, this is something, if, if you have um, a booty call, say, maybe you want to have sex with multiple sex at that time. Or if you're a prostitute, you might want to have sexual intercourse multiple times as soon as you meet somebody. But as a regular person who has morals and values and is looking for a long-term stable relationship, you certainly wouldn't want to come in, be thrown into a bedroom, and have the man ask you for sex multiple times. Plus, he doesn't even have to ask. You're laying there in the bed. You're going to sleep, and who knows what he's doing over there. So I thought that was ridiculous. And I knew immediately when I heard him talk that he was not serious and that I knew he was going to immediately go for sex. Now some of the couples on Married at First Sight did not have sex the first night, but this Chris, he was immediately going for sex and so I knew he was just, you know, looking for a booty call basically. He wanted somebody to have sex with and this show was providing him with some victim that he could abuse for, you know, a few nights while he while they were claiming to be quote unquote married. So so the, the girl was falling in love because she thought this man wanted to marry her. He never mentioned that she wasn't his type. And later, I think it was the next day or the day after, he says, well, he admits that he has, has been having sex because the girl he had sex with is now claiming that she is pregnant. And he is now emotionally confused because he wants to go back and have a relationship with the girl that he had sex with before and plus he's in this quote unquote marriage and he still wants to have sex with her he wants to have both of them basically but he's more serious about the girl he had before and it's also very strange because the girl he had sex with um, this is like perfect timing for her to find out she's pregnant so that was very strange and almost, I, th I thought initially, I don't know if whether it's true or not, it fa sounded like he was lying because usually people don't find out that they're pregnant that quickly and then call up the person they had um, sex with that fast to let them know, especially if they found, found out they were on a TV show called Married at First, what's that thing called? Married at First Sight. So I, th I thought he was just lying and made this whole situation up about someone being pregnant. Then he leaves. He leaves multiple times in the first couple of days. One, to go back and see the girl. Another, to go and clear his head. He can't talk to people because he's always jumping up and down, needing to go clear his head. I mean, the man has serious emotional problems. He's totally unstable. It's clear these people did not interview this man. They did not check his history. His family is also very, very weird. When Paige went down after they had sex, she was, she was telling them that they did have sex multiple times and that Chris had negative feelings about their relationship. Instead of getting understanding and, and sympathy for the family, compassion, they were laughing. The father, then, then there were two women. I don't know who they were. His mother and some other woman. They were laughing. They were saying like, oh, you really got tricked, didn't you, hon? But I mean, it was just crazy. I, and there she is. She's being victimized at the table as she's looking for a support system. Who is this man I'm married to? Can you tell me about him? That's basically what she was asking. Is, should I get out of this marriage immediately? 
Does he have another girlfriend? Has he been having sex more, uh, you know, more frequently than he's telling me? Does he have a lot of women out there? Does he have babies by people that I don't know about? What's going on? Because clearly he was not cleared to be on this show. And for this woman, this is emotional abuse. This is fraud. Fraud in getting her into the marriage. Fraud in encouraging her to have sex with this man. Uh, fraud in getting her committed to trying to extend the marriage. Immediately, these two should have been pulled apart when he said that he had had sex with somebody and he thought, and he thought she was pregnant. These two should have been given separate rooms. They should have been told the marriage would be annulled and gotten the whole thing canceled. And she should be paid a large sum of money for what this has done to her emotionally, her TV embarrassment, her any negative feeling. We don't even know if this girl's married. If this man is stupid enough to have sex just before, as, as he's being as he's trying out to be on TV with at married at first sight, and he's having sex to produce a baby, that means he's not wearing condoms. So we don't know how many times he's had sex with women without condoms, and we don't know if Paige was having sex with this man without condoms. I don't know. I don't know her age. I don't know his age. But these these people were totally not ready for the show, and I think they should sue. I think Paige should definitely sue for definitely for fraud definitely for sexual abuse and emotional abuse i think she should get long-term psychotherapy from the show i think that marriage should be annulled and uh, she should get a high financial compensation i mean there's some things they, that these some things are already done they can't be undone to her and those people who are doing the testing and working with these couples should all be fired because I think it's just to me it's just heartbreaking to do this to a young lady who's looking for love looking for family looking for I mean imagine if this girl was a was the only person in her family or uh and she, she didn't have a, a stable mother or father to support her and that she was really by herself I mean that a person like that could be totally totally dev devastated and victimized by this type of show okay so she was the big one and the one i wanted to get out because i mean i'm just really horrified by the story and you know how this is being repeatedly shown in the media and she's being humiliated many many times every single day and just horrible horrible situation then there's another black couple, and they seem to be getting along great. He is uh, an entrepreneur. He's starting a new business, so that means he doesn't have money, and probably all of his money is going into starting the business. And he, mar and he married a girl that he likes. Uh, he's attracted to her, he says, and he says that they are getting along great. Now, his family member says that he has a anger problem and that when he gets angry you have to calm him down now he denies that he says that he's a great person and he doesn't have an anger problem but his family definitely said he had an anger problem and i don't think this has been investigated because this is a potential future domestic violence the girl he married is very petite she's small bone she's you know, mild mannered she's should make a great victim because she really wants to be in this marriage. She wants to be married, and she feels this guy is her perfect match. But if this guy has a temper problem, plus he has a financial problem because he's starting a business that is probably taking all of his money. I don't know where he's getting money from to finance this business. The business could potentially go belly up and not produce anything. And he might have other problems that come into play. And in addition, this girl that he married is, it seems, is expected to help finance his business because she has a job. And I'm sure he will be expecting some of their income from her work to go to his business. Now, this should be a prenuptial agreement. This is a definite prenuptial agreement situation. 
you know, the girl he married is very agreeable. She agrees to anything. So she's really going to be a pushover for him getting money out of her. And I don't know if she would ever not agree to something like that, but I, I don't think something like this show where you, you're marrying somebody you don't know and they're going to be expecting you to pay to start their business, a business that she had no input into the formulation of or the goals or anything. It's just absolutely ridiculous. So that's another problem I see for um, this couple. Plus, she's, he's very messy and already less than a week She's constantly picking up his stuff off the floor. Can you imagine marrying somebody and they're already throwing stuff on the floor, all their personal items on the floor, and you have to go around picking it up? That is a red flag that this was not going to work or this is not going to be a happy situation or somebody is going to be abused. Somebody's going to be much more cluttering and the other person is going to be expected to act like a maid and you know leaving dishes here leaving clothes here everything messing up this you know one part of the house and the other and not cleaning up after themselves and expecting you because that's how you started out the marriage cleaning up expecting you to continue that for life well for most women that's not good plus she works so she doesn't have time to be doing all this stuff he's not working he's a he's starting a business so he has much more time to clean up, but yet he hasn't shown any inclination to do that sort of thing. So I think that's a real problem. And another couple is Clara and the man she married. Now they're, see, they seem to be getting along well. Clara is very smiley, very agreeable. She has, her hair is dyed blonde, so that's agreeable you know people do like blondes blondes have more fun and she doesn't have physically anything that would stand out where she, where someone might find her not his type and the man she married seems to be giving in on some things that he might not have picked out for his future mate but they seem to be meeting in the middle agreeing on things. They did not have sex the first night. They talked and tried to find out things about each other the first night. And so I think they have a fighting chance to spend some time together and see whether or not this is going to work out. Another couple is Vincent. Oh, I already talked about Vincent and his wife. Okay. So another couple is the pilot. Oh my gosh. This guy, I, I don't really know what his problem is, why he was having trouble finding a mate. He seems very nice. He has the perfect job. Most women would love to date this guy because he has a great job and great benefits. And they match him up with a woman who appears to have an alcohol problem. She's an alcoholic. Now, the man comes from a family of pilots. His father was a pilot, and then he became a pilot. And when you're a pilot, of course, you can't do drugs, you can't have alcohol, especially in excess, and certainly not when you're working at all. So the girl they pick for him is younger, which I think he really likes, but she has a definite alcohol and party problem. She loves to go to bars, she has a group of friends she hangs out and parties with all the time, and she expects to do that continuing, to continue that life after marriage and she is very insistent that she can continue with her past friends, her past party friends, male and female, and drink. And I don't know whether she does drugs. I mean they haven't really discussed that on T V, but she may also be doing some drugs or marijuana or some other things. And this is totally not going to work for him and his lifestyle. He doesn't drink, but he caves in during the show and starts drinking more and more wine because she always has a glass of wine in her hand in the show. She is attractive, and as I said, she is younger. So I think this is enticing him to try to go and meet her on her grounds rather than stick to it. But if he wants to keep his job as a pilot, 
he's going to have to have her change as far as her social habits. And he also has a job where he will work for half the year flying to different cities. And so that for half the year, he's mostly working. And the other half is rest periods, vacations, and so forth. So um, he has an opportunity to be home for certain periods of time, rest, take care of any kids they might have, and help out around the house, and all kinds of great things from his career that she'll get. But the other thing is with a pilot is they come in, they might come in, say, at 7 p.m. Uh, if they do get home, they need that time to actually wind down because it's a high-stress job a huge amount of responsibility and so when they come home they need to they need to be able to relax do whatever they need to do and sleep because they have to be well rested this is not a job where you're going to be up partying until 1 and 2 a.m. and then be able to get up and you know take off at 7 a.m. on five hours sleep that's not going to work so that's the lifestyle she leads, but she doesn't seem to realize all that's entangled in having this man as her partner, and he's too weak to make the demands and just say, this woman is not going to work long term in this relationship. It's not going to work with this job. Now, if he gets another job with the airline, say maybe he becomes some sort of administrator, but even then, I mean, everything with airlines is very picky. So and they can diagnose you and get rid of you quickly. And the other thing about his partner is she likes to have to, to party with her male friends. Now, he doesn't know her male friends. He doesn't know if they're homosexual, heterosexual, bisexual, pansexual, whatever. So he doesn't feel comfortable having these people hanging around the house or with her going out and spending long periods of time. She says sometimes she goes out, she even sleeps on the couches in the houses of her friends, male and female. And she might spend the night, two nights, sleeping on couches in friends' houses. Well, this won't work with kids. I don't know what she's thinking. Unless she's taking the kids, to, she plans to take the kids to these houses too, or is she gonna have these friends coming over her house? And then he's gonna be stressed out because he doesn't know what's going on in his house. I mean, her friends might be bringing over drugs or, or drinking excessively or doing other things that might cause a problem in his life. So he, he's told her that he didn't like her having these college-style social relationships, but she is clearly clueless and is demanding that she can continue these throughout the marriage. So I would say that for him, I mean, she's average-looking, but, but still nice-looking, She's young, and he could easily find a girl who doesn't have her social problems and would be more fitting for his, li his, his lifestyle because his lifestyle is very strict. When you're a pilot, your lifestyle is very strict, and he's going to be doing that for 30 years. He might as well get the right partner and not have to get into another divorce situation. I don't know what his problems are. They haven't really been identified, but he seems like a very nice guy, and it seems like a lot of people would probably fit well with him as a life partner. There's another couple where they aren't getting along at all either. It's a younger girl and a man who really likes everything about the 1980s. He like his house has neon lights and all his clothes are related to things in the 1980s. He's always talking about the 1980s. He said he's a very, very unusual person. Now, this guy shouldn't be on the show at all. I don't even know why they would pick this person. You're not going to find randomly a person who wants to live this kind of lifestyle with this guy. He needs a different, he needs a, he needs a very special show that's going to pick a very specific partner because his partner is not going to be someone randomly picked up by a few general questions on a sheet. He's going to need somebody very specific for his 
things that he demands. He demands